Welcome to Analyzing Finance with Nick. In this video, I'm going to explain what a family office is, what it does, what it takes to have a family office of your own, and why is it the dream of every financial professional to have a family office of their own or to work at a family office. First, just let's start with definitions. A family office is an investment firm that manages the money solely of one family. And it's usually an ultra high net worth individual who had earned the money through either starting a business or inheritance and then builds out a staff independently to manage the family's assets. This could be in the case of a new money family office, a founder who has a liquidity event, sells their company for hundreds of millions of dollars and now um, needs to deploy the capital and the owners of the family office are the founder of the wealth and the future estate which is usually spouse and descendants. Uh, the other type of family office is there's also old money family offices which have been around for generations and often come in the form of a, of a foundation where it manages the money of the same family but the original founder who made the money and set everything up has been long deceased. There are also multi-family offices, which are family offices that are not owned by a single family, but instead serve a few select families in the same capacity as if a single family office was to run independently by their own family. And I'll elaborate more on multifamily offices as I go through this video. So why would somebody want to set up a family office versus hiring a financial advisor to manage their money? Like less ultra high net worth individuals do. They often go to a private bank or a wealth management firm and for a fee on assets, usually about 1%, the financial advisor or the wealth management firm or the private bank will manage the money for them and decide to allocate it across whatever asset classes they feel make sense. The reason why you would create a single family office over hiring an advisor or having your money managed by a private bank or wealth management firm is due to economies of scale. When it comes to a high net worth rich person is, I mentioned in my video how much money it takes to be rich. Let's say they have a net worth of $20 million and you are paying 1% on that. That is about $200,000 uh, in fees that you pay to your advisor. $200,000 in fees if you just not negotiate it lower because these clients tend to be able to have a lot of bargaining power is not enough money to finance a single family office. If you want to create a single family office, there's a lot of expenses that go into that. You first would need to hire a CIO, and a CIO is probably going for about four to $500,000 a year at minimum, including bonuses. And then you're gonna need a competent analyst to work with your CIO, and that's going for anywhere from one to $200,000 a year at minimum if you want a good one. And then on top of just your lean staff of two investment professionals, I'm assuming you don't have any back office or operations professionals or that's all outsourced for a reasonable cost, then you're still going to need to buy a Bloomberg terminal which is going to be about $30,000 a year. There's going to be other trading technology tools that probably in the outsourcing of the back office operations side of your family office. It's, it's not as much compliance because if it's a single family office, you don't need to register with a lot of regulatory authorities because it's viewed by um, the regulators as just basically a family managing their own money. So it's less than it would be if you were advising money for multiple families in terms of compliance costs. 
and regulatory costs, but there are still other back office things that need to be done to keep everything organized. And let's just say that all of that combined is about $10,000 a year. Uh, so if you add all of that up, you're going to be spending a minimum of $550,000 to a million dollars a year on operating this family office. Uh, if you have bigger investment staff or have some or other these other resources, maybe your family office manager needs to go travel to go do diligence do diligence on a privately held company that's outside of your hometown. That's a cost. But yeah, in general, like let's say the expenses are about a million dollars a year. So if you have about a million dollars a year in operating expenses for a family office to be set up, then in order for the family office to make more financial sense than hiring an advisor, your net worth is going to have to be well over a hundred million dollars. Uh, because at a hundred million dollars, a lot of advisors will work for less than one percent. And so the cost of hiring your own staff, and then it's not just financial costs, but just the probably additional headache of having to build a whole business within your family just to manage your family's assets is could be create a lot of stress and other personal headaches. It really doesn't make sense for those ultra high net worth individuals who have less than nine figured net worth to do it. And even if it makes financial sense for some of these bigger players to have a family office, it may not make sense for other reasons. So now before I go into how family offices are different outside of the fact that they manage just a single family or a small group of families money, then um, I'd like to just update you guys and remind you to, if you like the, the content of this channel, to please like, subscribe, and share, and have engagement with what we're doing. Uh, the more involvement that this channel has just with people engaging with the videos directly or sharing it with others, and the more it grows, the more it gets out there, and the ideas and the concepts that we try to educate people reach more people, which is my goal. And it motivates me to make more and better content and improve content the more people watch it. With that, let's get back to family offices. So outside of just the fact they often serve just a single or small group of families, family offices also are different really in the way they can approach investments. Since they are only focused on one family, and usually those families' goals are multi-generational just to keep the wealth going on long enough so that future generations will not, no longer have to work, they have a lot more flexibility in their investment mandates. If you're managing money for somebody who's going to spend all that money in retirement, you can't really take the same risks as somebody who has a much longer time frame. And if you work at an institution like a hedge fund or a mutual fund, uh, you often have more strict mandates that restrict what type of investments, whether, uh, whether it's certain types of stocks, whether it's only a certain asset class, or you can only go long a certain asset class or short a certain asset class or in, go, enter the pub, be public market only or private market only. Um, there's usually hard mandates that limit other types of investors from having a more gestalt approach that family offices have luxury to do. That's why a lot of investment professionals like to work at a family office because they can have a more long-term approach like five, ten years plus out. They have a lot more flexibility in the types of investments they can do, so it kind of fulfills an intellectual curiosity to put your hand in a bunch of different things. And on top of that um, as well, they're not as concerned about shorter term performance because the money isn't needed right away. And unlike mutual funds and hedge funds who investors are more into chasing performance in the short term than the longer term approach, it's often more job security for people to work at family offices and they can take more longer term time because you have a down year 
as a hedge fund manager or even mutual fund, you underperform the benchmark for a couple of years, your assets are going to disappear rather quickly. And the volatility of asset flows in more institutional um, investment firms, uh, it creates a lot more job insecurity for one and two. It just creates a lot more stress to deliver now. And so therefore the time preferences of investors at these firms is short. Whereas with family offices, they have the luxury of having a much longer term time frame. So they don't have to deal with those market forces that institutional investors have to deal with. And so then why that answers the question why a lot of people like to work at family offices. And the reason why most investment professionals want to eventually start a family office, not because they have a particular passion for this style of investing, but it's more a sense that it's just kind of proof that you've made enough money that you can not only retire yourself, but your family for the next few generations. And family offices are starting to become kind of a status symbol among the ultra elite because if you have a family office, means you have enough money where a family office makes sense over hiring an, a regular investment advisor. A family office also has the other benefit for families is that it can be a source of employment for descendants in your family. If you want your family members to have a cushy job and a nice living standard without having to go through the grind of working in institutional finance or work long hours and have the luxury to still kind of live a life of leisure, but still nominally hold a job. Uh, you can put your child in the family office once they graduate from college and they have the, uh, the perception of being a productive, gainfully employed society. But as the patriarch or the matriarch of the family, you can decide really whether they, you need them to work that hard or not. And it's, I'm not saying that, family offices are just the land of spoiled children. There are plenty of people who manage family offices who are from the family or hardworking. Do they just were passionate about finance and they're like, why bother working for somebody else and growing their wealth if I can just focus on my family? But it does give the opportunity as an outlet, as I've mentioned in kind of some of the David Graeber videos I did, as an outlet to place somebody in an upper class job without a lot of demands. So, that's another perk of a single family office. And then the other perk is transparent is a lack of transparency. If you're a have the money with an institutional investor, institutional investors have disclosed their assets. Um, you're also you, they don't have to say who their clients are, but at the same time, your money is going to be held at a third party custodian. And so there is a paper trail that it can be seen and if you're, and if you're an outside advisor, there's a third party who can see your personal records and you'd rather, and your asset, and it's in liabilities. And if you would rather not have that and just have keep everything in house and only hire family members to manage the money, you can have a lot more privacy than you would if you put your money with a professional advisor outside of the family. So privacy is the other advantage of family offices. And so where do multifamily offices fit in? Well, multifamily offices kind of provide a little bit of the best of both worlds. They do provide a lot of the bespoke touch that a single family office could provide if you were hiring outside professionals and not having family members manage the money directly. However, they can probably do it also at a fraction of the cost of a single family office itself and building it out yourself. If you have a multifamily office that works say with five families, each family only has to kick in 20% of the costs of operating the family office versus having to do it all themselves. So that would allow lower, relatively speaking, net worth individuals to be able to participate in the family office game, like those with high eight figure net worth versus the $100 million plus club if they wanted to. The downside of multifamily offices is that effectively they're very similar to a, um, a, a more sophisticated financial advisor or wealth management firm where they have multiple clients and what they are doing is often has to take consideration of 
others, maybe in terms of priority of trades, like they can't really prioritize buying, say, if you think it's a good idea for all of the family offices, the only families you work with to own the same stock or asset class, they can't prioritize your family getting the shares worse versus another family. And then there's also the, 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 the lack of privacy issue as well, like, because these multifamily offices are not aren't they can be if they're split among equity ownership in the family but they tend to be owned by people outside of the families involved with the multifamily office and so as a result like any other outside business um, it kind of um, you have a, your assets with a third party and be managed by a third party and if third parties can see what your net worth is or your financial assets and usually customers give an, an and investors give transparency to their advisors so they can make the best decisions for them so that's the main downside of a multifamily office relative to a single family office less control and more and less privacy but it's at lower cost and so therefore less wealthy families can't participate. The question really I ask is what's the line between just a regular wealth management firm and a multifamily office? I mean a multifamily office does sound a little fancy but in theory like isn't every wealth management firm a multifamily office theoretically? Like, I don't really know what the cutoff is. Like I've done research on it. It's just like I guess a couple dozen families maybe your top but there are exclusive wealth management firms who really only work with that many. So I guess it's just more of a, a you know, marketing thing than anything. I really think that in my opinion, the only true family offices are the single family offices, but that's just my take on it. Uh, let me know what you think about family offices is something that you thought was interesting or any other topic you think I should address either in the hold money segment or on this channel directly. Thanks for watching.